a second into the run. <laughs> Only in Belfast. <laughs> Yeah, my fitness has been better, but like I said, it's been a, it's been a lot worse. God damn it. All right, gotta steady my finger. All right, there we go. No, that'll not do it. That's it. Ah, uh, there. That was good. Three times 2K, six by a K. Sometimes you just have to accept the fitness isn't where you want it to be, accept it's not where it's at, and then do the things right, and you can get it to a better place. Let me start my watch. So today the priority is getting heaps of volume of good running done, so Obviously, a lot of people prioritize mileage and running volume, and obviously that's important, and we have established that that's important. If you want to be good at running, you have to run. But I find that my body responds really well to doing high volumes of intensity at what I would call intensities that count and so what I mean by that in terms of intensity that counts is running at speeds intensity effort heart rate lactate whatever you want to determine the effort by at those kind of intensities heart rates lactate speeds that help you move forward. Much more specific, sorry buddy, much more specific to the races that you're gonna run in, rather than just jogging or running easy. Okay, and so the priority today, like I said, heaps of volume. And so it's three times 2K and then six by 1K. And so the three times 2K, so as you can see, Ireland has a lot of green, which is cool. But today's session is three times 2K and then six by 1K. And so what I like to do, here's like, here's the theory. Theory says doing threshold, and there's full lectures on threshold if you wanna check them out and you wanna know more. But theory says, run threshold at a low lactate. And I'm okay with that. So I dedicate the first 6K of the session to very easy intensity, feeling good, in control, almost frustrated that the effort feels a little bit too easy. I devote 
half of the session to that. Science says, hey, run at this intensity. It's really good for you. You'll get better. No problem. Like I said, I have no problem with that. But science to me, it only goes so far, right? And so I know what the textbook says. I know what science says. But then I think to myself, hold on. When I've raced really well, okay, we're going through a little gate. Oh dear. Somebody didn't close the gate, which, gosh, say, that is a little bit naughty. So now what we're saying is, I like science, I think it's important, I think it plays a role, but if I think to myself, whenever I've raced well, and it doesn't matter, well, forgive me, what I mean is, not just as a, a man, no, I recently, lately, but when I've raced really well, like, in general, as a 16 year old, an 18 year old, 24, periods of my career that I look back at and I think, Stephen, you were running really well. I was working pretty hard. <laughs> I'm working pretty hard right now. Oh my God. I could have picked a run with less hills. Oh. All right, so here's like, here's the like theory behind today. Half the session, I devote to science. <laughs> I devote to the kind of intensity, lactate, heart rate, all that good stuff that the textbook says you'll get better. I have no problem with that. No problem whatsoever. <laughs> but the second half of the session, I say to myself, okay, that's what the textbook says as a global. That's what the textbook says for a general rule of thumb. However, Stephen, oh my God. Let me get my breath back. But then I think to myself, if there was a textbook just for you, you specifically, and you analyzed all the training you've ever done, and you started to look at, hey, when you raced really well, what worked? Well, I gotta tell you, in that textbook, <laughs> a lot of the periods of training that led to really great races, honestly, coaches probably would have like lectured me. Stephen, that's too hard. Stephen, you're running this too hard. You might have actually found during those, hey guys, you might have found like during those periods of training, I'm not joking, if a coach was, let's say a coach was at the track, and I know this for a fact, or a coach was at some grass fields, and every time I came round, the coach said, hey Stephen, what's your heart rate? <laughs> Is your heart rate below threshold? I'd have probably lied. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> and so, hang on, we have another gate. All right, let me pause my watch this time. <sighs> hey, doggy. <laughs> Morning, buddy. Have a good one. And so, 
instead of just telling you that threshold is really great and that you should do threshold, which you should, I'm gonna tell you a story. <laughs> and I love stories. This is called Giant's Ring, by the way. It's a, uh, it's really quite gorgeous. But I thought on today's YouTube, I'd show you around a bit. Let's go a bit closer. Anyway, the story is that threshold is really important. There's no doubt about it. I'm in Belfast. It brought back memories to kind of how I got good at running. And to be honest with you, okay, let me show you Giant's Ring first. Okay. Yeah, nobody really knows how these uh, giant stones got to Belfast, but there they are. And so, did I start my watch? Oh, did it again. All right, so, as the story would go, in 2005, 2006, I'm not saying I wasn't good at running. I was pretty good at running, I'll go this way. I was pretty good at running, but basically, I was by no means the best. I wasn't even, at that point in time, like, call it the best in my, like, local area. And so, my coach at the time went to a seminar in England, okay? So, he goes to a seminar in England and he learns from Mo Farah's coach at the time, Alan Story. He learned that this threshold thing, well, that it's, that it's pretty damn good. And basically, if you start training at threshold, well, you get a lot better. Now, the, why the story is somewhat important, it's not so much that you guys don't already know that like threshold can help but oh my god I almost fell like we need another fall but basically it's not everybody knows threshold helps for god's sake is they're fed up listening to the fact that threshold bloody helps threshold helps everybody if you didn't know the story's not about that the story is how it helped, not so much why, but how, and how I used to do threshold, which is likely why it helped. So we go, our coach comes back from the seminar in England, and he, we all go and do these threshold tests. I think I'm gonna do one tomorrow, which will be really cool, or sorry, two days time, but I don't know for sure. But if I do, I'll upload it, I'll show you it. But he goes and, we go, sorry, and we do these threshold tests. And at the start of this story, I told you that you have to start thinking what, what, what training works for me, right? You have to think to yourself, any point of my career when I've raced really well, well, what was I doing? Why did it work? And you might not know the science behind why it worked, but you might be able to thank you guys. <laughs> Come on, doggy. <laughs> But you might know, like, let me tell you an example. When I was young, like, actually, 
around the time that we did these like threshold tests, if I got in school, right? Here's how, here's how school works. Now we get to go back down the hill, which is quite nice. But in school, you race a bit more. So you kind of race like, I don't know, every 10 days, for example, every two weeks. So if I got beat, which happened a lot, my theory was that like, I'd go run. Hey guys, have a nice walk. My theory was that I'd go run pretty hard over the next like seven days. I'd get up at seven o'clock in the morning before school. I'd run two mile up the road and two mile back. And I'd do it pretty hard. That was it. That was the theory. And I used to say to myself, well, the people I'm racing against, they're probably not doing this. Now bear in mind, I would do that in the morning and then I would go to the club that night and train again. So it was like, it was like extra. That was the theory. The theory was, I'm gonna do something that other people aren't doing and then I'll beat them because, because I'm doing more or I'm doing it harder or I'm willing to bloody get up at seven o'clock in the morning and go do this. I don't know the science. I didn't know it when I was 15 years of age, but when I look at the race results, two weeks later, I'd beat those guys. I don't need to understand the science. The logic is I got beat. I put something in place to help me get better. It worked. I won. Really simple. Now, let's get back to you looking at your training. Look for, look for those patterns. Look for things that you've done. You don't have to understand it. Just, it doesn't matter if like, it's hills on a Monday. It doesn't matter if it's, I don't know, more reps on grass. Just think about things you've put in place, when you did it, what kind of race result did it lead to? If you get a new running coach and that running coach says, you're doing this too hard, you're running this too fast, I think you're gonna get injured. See that word, I think. You, you start listening, you start doing what you're told, you slow everything down, and three, four races in a row, you run like a bag of shit, and you're not better. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Sometimes we listen to what everybody else has to say about what we should do. This is where we are. So sometimes we're guilty of doing what everybody else thinks we should do. Kind of like listening to all these other voices. Do this, don't do that. Well, I think sometimes we're guilty of, oh, too many voices in the one ear. And then you stop thinking for yourself. Well, I understand what he's saying. They don't want me to get injured. I appreciate that. But now I'm like, now I'm like worse at running. <laughs> and okay, my, my old structure or model of training might not have been perfect, but at the end of the day, when I raced, <laughs> well, I was faster. <laughs> and so have a think about what has perhaps worked for you. Now, going back to threshold, our coach comes back, we do these tests, we go to these grass fields in Belfast every Thursday, and we do, I guess, a threshold run. 
and we're, we were given these like specific heart rates that we should stick to and there you go so over a six week period I began to notice oh my god we're getting way better so six weeks later all of a sudden I'm able to run at the same heart rate but I'm way faster so first and foremost that's awesome but like I said earlier if the coach asked me on like lap 10 Stephen what's your heart rate I'd lie oh it's 170 it would have probably been 174 175 the reason the reason I'd lie is because I used to do it with two of my other training partners and friends and they I know that one of them he would have lied too and he definitely would have been pushing too hard like me but the reason I'm telling you this story I don't I don't want to like start call it a condoning or even suggesting that you know hey you need to go and start pushing really hard but let me tell you I went from an athlete that couldn't win the local championship to probably two months later I don't only win the local championships I come second in all of Ireland which is incredible <laughs> three weeks later I come second in Ireland Scotland England Wales so like I said I've gone from morning guys thank you so much I've gone from this athlete that you know couldn't win basically we have a we have like a province called Ulster Ulster is like a very small part of like parts of Northern Ireland parts of Southern Ireland so you've gone from you can't win your local race to you can do very well in all of Ireland and then three short weeks later you've beat everybody like that made the Irish team most people that made the England team Scotland Wales only one person beat me and that tells you it probably tells you how much and I'm gonna be careful with my words it doesn't just tell you that threshold is amazing because it wasn't just threshold I was likely doing 30 to 40 minutes from the very bottom end of threshold I the first few laps of training it was about a two and a half minute lap around these fields I probably sat at a responsible and like disciplined heart rate for about the first I don't know <laughs> three or four laps 10 minutes and then I did what I always do and I thought all right let's start pushing just for once a build-up to just be clean because I don't do stupid things and the silly mistakes I keep making and then that'll produce a result that I'll finish and I'll go yeah that was the one there wasn't like a I ran 209 but when I ran 209 I knew I was still tired from a half marathon I did three weeks before that was never in the plan so had I not done the half marathon I might have ran 208 already or if it wasn't 15 mile per hour winds and sleet and snow um, yeah sticking to a plan following through with the build up and seeing a result that is a fair reflection of my ability without me holding myself back 
I coach maybe like 10 athletes. Uh -huh. And I realized that I set them all this training, but I never actually like, I don't really ever give them anything around that. And that's kind of the whole problem with like online training plans. The core principles of the school is to teach people everything that I do is autopilot that they won't know about. Showing people by video, warm up drills, pre-run activation, strength conditioning, everything. Technique drills, all sorts. We'll have recovery, nutrition, strength conditioning, psychology, and then we'll get to the very running specific how to run, how to train the right way, how to execute training the right way, how to set goals, how to work on your technique, all sorts. But it will be like, yeah, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's gonna help people a lot. See, like, I did a podcast a week ago and I've been told four years later, it's the best one yet. <laughs> and that's probably because it centers around mental health and honesty and, but it's all connected. Sharing it. It's only until you start doing it and helping people that you're like, wow, this is a bit bigger than even I am. And look, this is a good story because it actually happened really close to where I'm running right now. The pitches are about, probably about two miles of running from here. And I can probably go show you, but why I'm telling you this, it's not just threshold. The, the magic sauce, the, you know, the prime ingredient the kind of like, this is what you should do moving forward, has to be specific to you. You must start to figure out what you respond to. About four weeks ago, no, probably like three weeks ago, I was doing my training and then I had a look at like, Basically, what did you do before you ran 209? Well, what did the training look like? And let me tell you, any of the coaches across my career that have told me you're doing that too hard, you're doing that too quick, you're pushing this too much, you should slow this down, well, they wouldn't have liked the training for 209 because they'd have been telling me <laughs> four days a week that I need to slow down <laughs> and so I dissected the training I realized that when I was doing what threshold is a very loose term it's like because it's such a broad range I don't know it's like I'm trying to think of an example, but it's such a broad spectrum. It's not telling you a lot. That was a threshold session. Okay, well, what kind of threshold session? An easy one, a hard one, etc. So when I looked at it on these days that I probably thought, Stephen, you're, you're out there, you're working threshold, very loose term. As it goes, I was probably working what we now call aerobic par. Aerobic par is this area just above threshold. And I can't tell you the answer why, but when I start to add more, I'll tell you two things. So when I, first you can see my session i uploaded it about a month ago it's aerobic par 
It's in Flagstaff, Arizona. I don't love it. It doesn't go very well. I can barely get the heart rate up. I'm struggling to push. My legs are not loving it. But then when you fast forward, literally three weeks later, and I do an aerobic par session with Jack Rowe in Bushy Park. Oh, different athlete. And I only did, that was my third aerobic par session, literally my third. And suddenly you have myself and Jack. I'm running, this is quite nice here. So suddenly you've got, uh, gonna lose my hat. You've got myself and Jack, I'm running a hell of a lot faster and I'm carrying like a camera in one hand, a camera in the other hand. I'm slowing down, speeding up, different athlete. So you need to find what works for you and then Oh, sorry guys, yes, yes. appreciate it. So you need to find what works for you, build it in, test the theory. Does it work? When you add that session in, in two weeks time, three weeks time, are you faster? Do you notice a difference? How does it feel? Start to think about that. My next piece of advice would be figure out for how many weeks do you get quicker because nothing so if you do if you do like very low end threshold stuff like i said the three times 2k today at the start of the session very safe very easy but the third word would be very sustainable it's very if there was such a thing in running it's like having an electric car that never runs out of electric very clean energy very sustainable for months and months and months if you keep doing it you'll keep getting better but very very slow return that that sort of like getting better you're not going to notice it that much as you increase the intensity, let's say you go to medium threshold, high end threshold, aerobic par, VO2 max. As you go up the gears and you start working little bits harder, well, you get a, I'll show you where we are. We're here. Beep, 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 beep. Um, and so as you move up through the gears, thanks guys, you go that little bit faster. Well, of course the return is like, let's call it greater. The results, the impact, it's faster, but probably just like shooting a, uh, NOS, you ever see the Fast and Furious movie? Well, when you pump NOS into the engine, of course, <laughs> you go faster and it's great, but it runs out really quick. And so let's pretend just like me, you respond really well to aerobic par. Another hill guys, I'm telling you, oh, pick the wrong run. So. You respond really well to aerobic par. That's awesome. But you need to sort of experiment and see for, let me give you an example. Let's pretend when you include aerobic par, just like me, you do 1K reps and you average four minutes. You come back 10 days later at the same heart rate, the same effort, you average 350. Amazing. 
let's be honest. You're not gonna improve 10 seconds per K every week indefinitely. And so here's the balance. The balance is finding what works first and foremost. Figure out what works, then try it, do your session. An example, eight times 1K, one minute rest, probably around 10K pace. And what you're gonna find is you'll come back seven to 10 days later, still do your other sessions, low threshold marathon, hills, etc. Come back 10 days later, do the same session at the same place and see, is it better? Did it go better? Morning. So you can do that again and again, and you will find after 30 days, three full 10 day cycles, you might find actually it's not getting any better. Maybe you get to 340 per K and you simply don't really get faster. So what you then have to do, sorry guys, what you then have to do is stress that same system, but in a different way. You don't just have to go faster, you can go further. Instead of doing Ks, 1200s, 1500s, etc. And that's long, long story short, because I don't even know how long. Let me check. No, I can't even check. All right, that's about a 25 minute story, I think. Long story short, I love to follow science. I think it's really important, but I also just know for a damn fact that running goes a little bit beyond science because humans aren't like, it's not always easy to explain why some things are possible. And so the book can say something, but I feel like I like to challenge that. And when I look at every time that I've ran really well, it's when I've been, call it practicing, running pretty hard. I haven't just ran by the book at the speeds that the book says is really good. And so back to today's session, I do three times 2K, I obey the rules, I keep the intensity at the right intensity, the lactate at the right lactate. But the second half of that session, I say to myself, Stephen, whenever you've raced really well, I, I don't understand all the science, I don't know all the science, I don't care about the science. I say to myself, whenever you've raced really well, and a coach has said, is your heart rate still that threshold? I've gone, yeah, but I'm lying. And so that's my, sorry guys, that's my second half of the session. Well, that's me being me. That's me being the, call it 16 year old version of myself that didn't give a shit about heart rates, lactates, nothing. I just liked winning. Oh, let's not run over the dog. <laughs> Morning guys. So that athlete, that kid, he loved pushing. And not only did he love pushing, he loved winning. And he was willing to do whatever it took to get better and win. And I guess as we get older and we have more coaches, fellow athletes, more people in our little 
running community, well, we let them impact what we do. And if I'm being honest, I think sometimes, hold on, I think sometimes that's awesome. And like some people can have like a really great influence and a really positive influence. But sometimes, let me tell you, sometimes people think they're like protecting you. They think they're doing what's right by you. But it's like an overprotective parent. And sometimes in life, that's really important. But like, if I was sitting in a classroom right now, I'd say, raise your hand if you think you've got a bit soft. And I'd, <laughs> my hand would be up. And my hand would be up because when I was 15, 16, I didn't give a shit about anything but winning. I didn't care what intensity people told me to run at. When, when I used to go to my club on a Sunday, everybody at the club said he runs too hard because I would do like a one hour 40 to two hour run. My average heart rate would probably be, oh, I don't know, 160. It was hard, really hard. That little kid would kick my ass over that run right now. But I didn't care what people said. Now, I'm not being like arrogant here. Now people want to copy that little kid because they're like, holy shit, that little kid bloody went and ran 209. But the reason I ran 209 is because my attitude during that camp that led to the 209, my attitude was in a really great place. My attitude went back to that little kid mentality that just wanted to win. That attitude had no problem on a Sunday running with Olympic champions, world champions, didn't matter. That little kid was back. And so learn what works for you, but also don't tame the parts of you. Maybe they're greedy. Maybe there's parts of you that have dreams and goals. Fuck, might have to walk. <laughs> Maybe there's parts of you that still has these like dreams and aspirations to be one of the best. Don't let people tame that, work with that, use it, be smart with it. I'm not encouraging you to go get injured, know your limits, but sometimes you gotta take the safety harness off and give it a go. I'm gonna leave you there. I've gotta run back to the track, but hope you enjoyed that. I threw in parts of the session there. Take care, all the best, be good. <laughs> Thanks guys, bye bye.